After more than three years of arduous work, Thorfinn and Einar finally cut down the last tree and celebrate their success. Einar had recently spoken with Peter, who informed him that they would be able to purchase their freedom after the upcoming harvest from the newly cleared land. He also revealed that they would have some extra money left over. Thorfinn curiously asks Einar what he plans to do once he is a free man. Einar is unsure, explaining that no one awaits him in his homeland. He is also concerned about Arnheit's situation and would feel more at ease if she could be freed as well. However, Thorfinn disagrees, stating that Kettle would not permit her release. Einar pondered aloud whether Thorfinn would return to Iceland once he was free. Thorfinn wasn't certain, but he admitted it was a possibility. The two men chuckled at the thought of not having solid plans for the future. Suddenly, Thorfinn's expression became serious. He revealed that he had been contemplating a seemingly impossible goal, eliminating war and slavery from the world. He asked Einar if he believed it was achievable. Einar's eyes widened at the thought, acknowledging that it would be a dream come true if they could accomplish such a feat. As the celebration continued, Kael, accompanied by Olmer, arrived at the scene and noticed that the last tree had been cut down. He questioned if Thorfinn and Einar believed they could prepare the land for planting in time, to which Einar confidently affirmed that they could, provided they hasten their efforts. Unexpectedly, Kettle announced that he would offer them a discount and informed them that once the planting was completed, they would be free. Both Thorfinn and Einar were surprised and speechless. Kettle, noticing their reaction, asked if they were unhappy with the proposition. Einar immediately denied any unhappiness and began to scream with joy, causing Thorfinn to join in. Kettle, however, reminded them not to celebrate prematurely, cautioning them to wait until he returned before making any definitive plans. Kettle asked Thorfinn and Einar if they had seen Sverkel. When they replied in the negative, he instructed them to relay a message to him that he would be journeying to the palace in Jelling to visit King Harold. Kettle also assured them that he would be back in time for the planting season. Before departing, Kettle turned and inquired if they would like to continue serving him as his retainers, after their release. He gave them time to ponder the idea before leaving. Gunnar gently awakens Canute, informing him of their impending arrival in Jelling. As they arrive in Jelling, they meet with Wolf, who informs Canute of his brother King Harold's worsening health condition. Canute inquires about his brother's prognosis, to which Wolf shares that the next few days will be crucial. As Canute surveys his surroundings, he catches sight of children playing a game that he and his brother would occasionally play together. Memories of their time together come flooding back to him. Despite the palace's power struggles regarding Sven's succession, Harold never paid attention to their squabbles. As young Canute and Harold are playing, Canute trips and falls. Harold tells their friend Ragnar not to worry, that Canute is tough, and that he is spoiling him. Nonetheless, Ragnar rushes to check on Canute. Canute reminisces about the times his brother helped him, feeling grateful and wanting to thank him. Suddenly, the children's ball rolls towards Canute, and he sees it as a gruesome reminder of his father's decapitated head. Wolf shoes the children off. He notices Canute's distress and asks if anything is wrong. But Canute brushes it off, saying it's nothing. However, his haunted expression hints at the turmoil within. Harold and Canute both inherited their own territories from their father, Sven. Harold inherited Denmark, being the older brother, while Canute inherited England. Despite the distance between their lands, the two brothers had a strong and supportive relationship. When Canute set out to conquer England, Harold provided direct support by sending fleets of ships to aid him. Canute successfully became King of England with his brother's help, and their bond remained unbroken. However, shortly after Canute's coronation, Harold became ill and unfortunately had no heirs to succeed him as ruler of Denmark. Canute arrives at Harold's bedside, where his sister Estrid welcomes him warmly. However, as he is now King of England, Canute reminds her to address him as Your Majesty. Harold is weak and sleeping, so Canute advises them not to disturb him, as he plans to stay for a while and speak with his brother when he feels better. When Harold wakes up, Canute urges him to rest and not worry about his kingdom. Harold responds by declaring that Denmark now belongs to him. Canute smiles, but gently dismisses his brother's claim urging him to focus on his health and recover so that they can continue playing their games together. As Canute looks at Harold, he sees an apparition of their father, Sven, who appears to be taking on Harold's form. Sven remarks that he is impressed with Canute's ability to pretend not to understand what is happening. Sven reveals that he is visiting the man whom he poisoned, and questions what he hopes to achieve by doing so. He also wonders why Harold, who was friendly to Sven, needed to be killed, when they could have ruled the world together. Canute's motivation for taking the crowns of England and Denmark was not for the sake of peace and prosperity, 
but for his ambition to become the king of all the North Sea. Sven warns Canute that the crown's curse is inescapable, and by taking the two crowns, Canute will suffer more than Sven did. Estrid intervenes and brings Canute back to his senses, explaining that he suddenly went into a daze. Canute explains that he is fine, and he had just felt a bit dizzy. As they prepare a room for Canute, he takes his leave. Canute is in his room, staring at the crown. A woman enters with a drink, and Canute asks where it came from. The woman is confused, so Canute clarifies that he is not thirsty and does not need the drink. Suddenly, Sven's head appears before him, and Canute becomes alarmed. Sven reminds Canute that he is haunted by the fear of being poisoned because he poisoned others. Canute scolds Sven for appearing in the middle of the afternoon, calling it mischievous. However, Sven explains that if he can appear to Canute during the day, then the curse must be growing stronger. Canute believes that uniting nations is crucial to creating a utopia, and having two kings would inevitably lead to trouble. He justifies Harold's death as a necessary step towards achieving this goal. Sven remarks that Canute is beginning to think like a king, to which Canute responds with a chuckle. He admits that he once hated Sven and wished for his death, but now he considers him the only person he can speak candidly with. Despite their respective curses, Canute wants to become friends with Sven. Canute reminisces about playing with Harold in the past. Sven interrupts their conversation and summons Harold for a war council. As Harold departs, he advises Canute to become stronger than both him and Sven. And with that, we conclude this episode.